Hey there, Andy Slowetsky. I am joined today by Frank Malozzi. He is the Chief Revenue Officer for EFI. Uh, how are you doing today, Frank? I'm doing well, Andy. Good, good seeing you. Great seeing you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, why don't you, before we get started, um, you know, give us an overview. Who, who is EFI and you know, where are you located? Uh, where are you calling in from? Okay, so um, EFI Electronics for Imaging, as you know, we, uh, we've been around for 30 plus years. We're known also for the folks that make the, the fiery devices that sit next to um, high-speed copiers and printers. We make um, printers and develop software for commercial print applications, as well as large banners and displays and so on. Um, we're based, you know, we're based all over the country, but um, headquarters here is in uh, Silicon Valley in Fremont, and I'm here in my home in Danville, California, which right. is in the, um, the Bay Area near, near San Francisco. And so it's, the weather's nice. It's about 80 today. And uh, I'm here in my, my home office, um, which, you know, it's, it's kind of new for me because um, I don't typically spend that much time here. No, you don't. No, you don't. I have, uh, so I, for, for those of you watching, I have known Frank for 20, I, I counted back, I think it's probably close to 23 years. Uh, he's one of the first people I met in this industry when I started traveling with my dad another lifetime ago. Uh, and you were, you were launching all sorts of color products back then, and you were living in a much colder place in the country as well. Um, we had snow here, by the way, in Rochester yesterday. I'm just going to throw that out there. Oh, so, you did. <laughs> uh, Weather-wise, I'm a little miserable, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy. I'm safe. I'm okay. So I can't really complain. As far as that goes, you know, that's the next question. How are you doing? How's the EFI uh, family doing? How's your personal family doing? How's the, the San Francisco community doing? You guys were one of the first to lock down. How, how, are, how are we all doing? Yeah, so, so uh, look, you know, um, the one thing is, you know, everybody, everybody's absolutely in this together, but um, <clears throat> I've been de locked down for probably a shelter in place for eight weeks now. Our county here in, Cal in, 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 in the Bay Area and in, in California was the first county to uh, shelter in place. So that, ha that started the um, first, first week of March. So we've been, uh, been grounded ever since. Wow. Um, and especially for someone like me, I'm, I'm, I'm on the road a lot. I'm, Typically, by this time, I easily have about 100,000 mile, 100, miles clocked in the air. Yeah. And uh, I think I barely made 5,000 miles so far. I mean, because we, we had kicked off our year in, uh, in January. But, you know, the, the EFI family, thankfully, is, is healthy. You know, we are um, we're, we're monitoring it on a daily basis. As you know, we're a global company. Um, the Bergamo, which was the first really um, outside of China, was really the first hotspot ironically enough, is where our textile manufacturing and one of our facilities is located right in the heart of Bergamo. So it was very, um, it was telling for us early on the impact of this terrible disease. And so we were really um, concerned about the folks in the factory and, and people there. So uh, we, we, we learned a lot early on what, uh, what we had to do and we took it serious. Um, is that coming back on that factory? Is it uh, starting to, to slowly get back in get, get its feet under it or how, how they yeah there, there's there's some of the restrictions are slowly loosening up and we're starting to see um you know we, we're not we're not at full production yet but uh, we're start, certainly starting to see uh that uh, that opening up there but um but uh, we uh, yeah so this this just again translated um in terms of what what we were going to expect in in the rest of the world so thankfully we have um our folks are healthy and um you know they are all shelter in place and we're following all of the uh, the you know the local rules and regulations and laws uh worldwide. From a personal perspective um I've got my family most and I'm from New York so most of my family are in New York and uh, terrible to see the impact. I did have a couple of my family members affected by the virus. My my daughter had it um thankfully knock on wood. She, uh, she, she got through it in, in eight days, tough okay. disease. And then my brother, who's a little bit older than, than I am, uh, also got, got it and he, had it, he was affected a good 10 days with it. So, uh, so certainly uh, it was a lesson that um, certainly I, w I was able to at least embrace what that, 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 that terrible disease is about and, um, and, and put it to practice in, in uh, our day to day and in, in our business here, so. Well, nothing like having your, your own personal family, yeah. you know, come up yeah. with it and, and to, to, to really bring it home. I'm glad, uh, glad they're over that. And, you know, that's the, the good thing. I mean, we do hear a lot of doom and gloom, but, uh, you know, most of us, if, we, if and when we do get it, uh, most of us should, should be okay with it. I'm glad to hear your family is, is, is getting past it now. Uh, 
moving on, let's change gears a little. Let's talk about, uh, you know, what are you doing? Um, you're the chief <laughs> revenue officer. I imagine, uh, I imagine you've been up at night, uh, late night, especially early on trying to figure out, you know, your, your year plan is now, uh, we were chatting earlier, now turning into a quarterly plan and almost a day by day plan at times. <laughs> yes. uh, how is it managing a global company right now with this going on with the flare ups <laughs> at different levels and with your company shut down in some places? Um, you know, how are you, how are you just getting by? How are you doing it? So, you know, obviously EFI's got a plan. Um, we've, we've put a plan in place like many other companies out there. We're not immune to the challenges um, that, that we're all faced with. And, and, and the plan um, is, is one where we, you know, it's, it's unfortunate for many of us. We don't know. We just don't. Our crystal ball is cloudy. Yeah. And for, for me to go out and say, okay, let's take a look at the rest of the year and do a reset, I think I, I, it would be sort of an injustice for our folks out there to do that. So I took a different approach. Our company's taken a different approach, and we're kind of looking at this in, in increments. So monitoring, of course, like everybody else, week by week to see, see what, what is happening. But I look at, you know, my new quarter is a month, yeah. and my new year is a quarter. Yeah. So I'm looking at, okay, what's going on for the next month? And then how do we get through Q2? And then of course, when we get to Q3, you know, what's our plan for Q3? And then of course we do a reset for Q4. If I've got to look at the year in totality, the balance of the year, I think, I think I'd, I'd misguide my folks out there, my partners, and quite frankly, even setting the wrong expectations for my customers. So as, as much as we, we hear what's going on and we get a feel and we get a sense, I, I think we've put a pretty good plan in place to, uh, to understand that. The, sec the, the, sec the, second, the second part of it is I, I look at this, I, I actually look at it twofold. One is you got you to put a parallel plan in place. One is short term. We gotta, we're, we're currently living this, this situation. How do we get through this situation? And then, and then um, the parallel path is, what is it the business going to look like once we get out of this? Because the business isn't going to be the same. Right. The markets that are going to recover are going to be different. And I, I can't take a, exactly. I can't take a peanut butter approach to this business globally because I still have hot spots that will take a while to recover. So we're going to, we're taking an approach where let's focus on the key markets that are going to recover. Um, let's look at the segments of the marketplace that are going to recover. And let's put some, some approaches and some, some programs around that to, uh, to accelerate um, what this other side's gonna look like. So. Keeping busy. Keeping busy, totally. So you, you kind of touched on this um, and, and you know, obviously I know you guys very well from your print side, especially the fire side, uh, the fiery side and, and some of the workflow, uh, uh, you know, uh, graphic arts and, and production print, uh, in-play and all that stuff uh, that, that you guys do and have been known for and started as, uh, but you know, you, you, are, you are now, uh, uh, you know, uh, you have the Reggiani products, you have uh, textile printing, uh, ceramic printing. So you are in all these different areas. Um, you know, what does the future look like for, for EFI? Uh, you know, once we start trying to come out of this, put this behind us, and then, you know, what do you see as, uh, we talked a little earlier about it before we recorded, um, you know, some of the potential opportunities for EFI customers that, that, um, that are starting to kind of pop up on your radar. Fantastic question. So, you know, we touch, we touch a lot of segments of the market. So many of you know, you know, our, our presence in Fiery and what we do out there. And we, you know, Fiery is this, you know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful appliance that uh, enables these great devices that our partners build out there uh, to be productive, right? And, and more and, productive. More productive, a right? lot, a, a yeah. Much more, yeah, a lot more productive. And so we're doing a lot of things that we didn't do before because we had resources embedded into the field. So we're doing a lot of enhanced remote certifications. Uh, we've got new demo capabilities that we're doing online. And, and I kind of look at this as an interesting perspective. You know, we're all running and gunning to try to chase that number. And even being home for almost two months, I kind of thought, what do I need to do? It's like, I need to go clean the attic. And I haven't cleaned the attic and I've been wanting to clean the yeah. attic. And so now I kind of look at the EFI attic and say, well, there's a lot of things that we have up there. Yeah. And you know, we've got some, we've got some old bones and things that we want to kind of <laughs> kind of pull up. It's, it's a great time to go in and look at, look at these um, uh, approaches and, 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 and even for that matter, 
of programs that we can embed to, to, to share with our partners. And we've done that. Uh, we've, seen that we've seen that evolve over the first month um, while we were in shelter in place. And we're starting to see that really come to, to, to fruition. On the, on the industrial side, on the commercial side, we had some successes in the month of March going into early April on a number of wins for our software because obviously you can do an online demonstration quite effectively yeah. and customers never really embraced that, right? They wanted somebody on site and so on and so forth. Um, but we were really successful in closing some business. So we really, we really feel like we found sort of, um, I'm not going to call it the new norm, but we found an opportunity for our software business. Now on the industrial print business, I think we're looking at it a little bit differently you know, we, the industrial print business is very, it's very, very broad. And you've got a number of segments in, in, in industrial print. So I'll give you a great example. <clears throat> Under industrial print, you've got folks that supply print for trade shows and folks for in fleet, fleet graphics. You've got, you got folks that provide a point of sale and a lot of retail collateral for, for those retailers out there. And so ideally, we took a double click and we took a deeper dive to understand our customers. And we know that those customers may be tied to retail, may see a faster recovery because in retail, you got a lot of stuff stuck in the supply chain. Yeah. And so when they're ready to open, they're gonna open and they're gonna put some programs and promos in place. And these campaigns are gonna be, they're gonna be pretty, pretty vast. But I think it's gonna keep those folks busy. Um, so we're, we're doing a number of outreach um, uh, um, um, campaigns just to kind of touch our customers um, and, and, and we're learning, you know, Hey, instead of maybe, you know, that your, your, your trade show segment of your business isn't going to recover. Maybe you should parlay that into something different. And we came up with a, we, we kind of brainstormed a little bit and we came up with a couple of ideas that our customers really, really embraced. Um, so you got industrial print, you have display graphics, mm -hmm. uh, you have the decor market, which by the way, the decor market, when we get out of this, we'll certainly, uh, we think is, is, is really gonna ramp up quickly. Because when you look at commercial space, um, retail, restaurants, they're gonna need to reconfigure what they do today. With, big time, big time. Uh, big time, you know, they're gonna need to create division between obviously- uh, Separation. Later or others, and, and that's, gonna, that's gonna stimulate. But we have a new segment we created and we're sharing with our customers called Divisional Graphics. And what divisional graphics is, is that, you know, you got that separation at retail where you're going to put a barrier in there and you're creating some messaging, but also think about going to Home Depot or Costco where they're, they got folks queuing outside to get in. Well, the new norm is going to be that they're going to only let a certain number of people into these retail environments for quite some time. So now you're standing outside. Think about this, like you're in Disney. Yeah. And you got monitors around you. Well, you're standing outside and you're going to have a different view you didn't have before. Well, what a great opportunity to go out and create some messaging for that particular um, uh, individual or person just waiting. So new opportunities, floor graphics. Today you see the little arrows and stand yeah. here. You might want to, might, we might go out and, you know, have an opportunity to do a campaign with PepsiCo or Coke or Frito-Lay to have a piece of that graphic while somebody's sitting there waiting. Another, another opportunity to, uh, to, to you know, display the message. So when you ask what we're doing as, uh, uh, for, for, for our customers and what we're doing for our partners, we're, doing, we're, we're being a bit more <clears throat> creative and finding new ways and because the business will be different. The second is we, uh, I've asked my sales folks and asked every one of my customer sort of all of my customer touching individuals out there to please be more of an advisor for the for the for the customers talk about the stimulus package not just here in the u.s but we're a global company what spain is doing what italy is doing and understand what that stimulus package is because these are small businesses and 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 many of them you know there's Think about this, they have, they've been in business for generations upon generations. So the investments that they've made were gen, was generational. And now all of a sudden the world is saying, hey, shut your doors. And, you know, stop. I mean, stop. That, that's, just, stop. That, 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 that's just can't, that's just not possible. Yeah. So we workshop with our salespeople to understand the stimulus package, to understand where the money is, how to go out and apply for it. And we also reached out to a, 
a number of banks that we have relationships with. And we said, hey, look, maybe it's a, a, an opportunity to forgive um, for 90 days some payments so that our, these commercial printers can free up some, some, some dollars to either make payroll or keep the lights on. So those are the types of things that we're kind of doing today um, you know, that, that can certainly help our customers and our partners out there. Well, I mean, that's awesome. And, you know, I think a lot of us, not all of us, but a lot of us realize it's not the time to try to strong arm your customers, right? I mean, we're, um, you said it before, we're all in this together. We've got to make sure that we, uh, you know, we take care of each other and, and we get through this together. So, um, you know, credence to what you're doing and your approach and, and, uh, you know, I, I love it. And, 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 you know, sometimes you have to be a little sympathetic and, you know, we all are probably going to lose some customers over this and we're probably all going to take a little bit on the chin here and there trying to help them. But, you know, the help that we give the ones that make it are the ones that are going to get us through this and they're going to be, you know, loyal customers for a long time going forward. So, you know, it's worth that investment. Um, I love, love the, uh, the, the, just what I heard from you guys and, you know, you're definitely not sitting still. Uh, I do want to, you know, schedule another one as a follow-up because I'd like to chat with you and, and maybe sure. do an entire one of these on uh, retail and, op and opportunities in there because uh, I think we were just kind of scratching the surface and, and what you were saying there. So uh, before we wind up and, and finish, any, any last words for, uh, for my viewers? I, I got to tell you. I, so first of all, I'm so proud of the 3,000 employees that we have here. I mean, it, my, my phone just doesn't stop on the ideas. As you know, we put a number of initiatives in place. You know, EFI, we're one of the largest um, digital ink manufacturers um, in the world, and we do it here in the United States. Um, so in Ypsilanti, Michigan, and we uh, converted some of our production lines to, to, to manufacture hand sanitizer. Oh, that's awesome. So it, it really a cool thing. I mean, I, I kind of get the chills when I, you know, the, our team there went ahead and, and, and really uh, initiated this on their own. And we produced some of the sanitizer um, in accordance to the World Health, or Health Organization. So we're providing this, you know, to some of the local hospitals and many of the frontline folks out there. So we already did the first round and we're going to continue to supply that. The other thing that was really cool is when, when this first kind of hit, I, I got a number of emails and stories from a lot of our print providers because we, we're also in the fabric business. And so many of our customers, they print onto the fabric and then they put it, they put it, they put it on a cutter and they're able to go out and cut their design. Well, we had a number of customers around the world that have now produced personal protection equipment um, right, right from their, 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 call it either their wide format fabric printers or their cutters. So masks are being made in many of our facilities. You look at a company on, you know, in the East Coast, like, like Dugal has done it. You look at CGDI in Las Vegas. We got a wonderful partner and a customer in Southern California called Image Options who has donated and have created um, a number of, of personal um, protective equipment for, for our healthcare workers. So to see our customers step up and even overnight build, build this segment of, of, you know, and support this segment of, of, of the market that didn't exist is just um, a testament to the industry that we served, Andy, for many, many years. I, can't, I couldn't be more proud. I'm 35 years in this business and I couldn't be more proud and I am more energized today than I ever, ever uh, than I've ever been, uh, just simply because of what I the stories I hear and see that that our industry is capable of. Well, it's inspiring. You know, it really is. And 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 I've said it in other interviews. Um, you know, we are not the frontline workers, but we are the backbone, and and we're keeping them doing what they do, and we're contributing where we can. And whether it's masks from you and 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 hand sanitizer from your clients, and, and hand sanitizer from you, and you know, or a, a Xerox airlifting uh, production equipment in, or Canon doing this, or Rico doing that, face masks. I had a, an article out today. I saw that with Rico. Um, you know, and all these guys are your partners, by the way. Uh, it's it's just amazing to see how everybody is looking kind of inside at what they do and how can I reconfigure and, and help for the general cause and again we're not the frontline people but we we're contributing and, and, and it does make me proud of, of of a lot of the companies that uh, you know I've been chatting with and you know I appreciate uh, you taking the time out of your schedule and, and we will follow up with another one of these and uh, you know great talking to you as always Frank thank it's you so much here Andy I appreciate it it's great talking to you take care